So you hear the term macronutrients and micronutrients thrown around in this industry all the time. I'm even guilty of doing it myself, but I don't want you to feel left out anymore. It's time. In this video, I'm gonna cover exactly what macronutrients are, what micronutrients are, how they differ, how they compare, what you need to know about them, and why they're so important. Let's do it. What's good YouTube, it's your boy John Mango. I'm here representing Beyond the Iron where I'm looking to take your fitness and your nutrition further so you may change your life forever, but you won't change your life unless you actually take this advice and you apply it, meaning you gotta execute. This is theory, yes, but apply it like I have and like many others have, you'll get to your goals faster and more enjoyably. So, if this is your first time coming to the channel, I'd like to say welcome. I like to drop lots of nutrition, videos just like this, meal plans even, workout tips, tips, tricks, strategies, and everything in between to help you get to those goals. So if that's something you're interested in, which it should be, then by all means consider subscribing. As I mentioned at the beginning, we're gonna be talking about two of the most common terms known in the fitness industry, macronutrients and micronutrients, okay? Because I know it might seem like a very, very basic topic to a lot of people watching this video, but this is not for those people. This video is for those that aren't too sure what they are, what role they play, and why, why does every damn coach and fitness guru talk about them? So I want to make sure by the end of this video that you are not confused about any of these topics anymore and about what these are and how they're gonna play a role in you getting to your fitness goals. Because <laughs> let's be honest, at the end of the day, there's gonna come a point where if you are serious about getting to your fitness goals, it's probably best that you know these terms. Good job for you for clicking on this video. Also, once you understand this whole video, at the end of it, I'm actually gonna link you to another video that I've created, it's on my YouTube channel, where I'm gonna show you exactly how to calculate your own macros, your micros, and, and basically how to get all that stuff sorted out. So how I'm gonna work this video out is this. I'm going to talk about macronutrients first, then I'm going to talk about micronutrients, and within each, I'm going to talk about the specific macros. Within the micronutrients, I'm going to talk about, you know, where they come from, why they're important, and all that stuff, okay? So, that's going to be it. Now, this video could be one that's extremely packed with information. However, this isn't meant to be a uh, nutrition encyclopedia by any means, so I'm just going to break it down to the basics that you need to know and that you can apply. All right, let's go ahead and get started with macronutrients. Nutrients, okay, this is the one with the A, macro. Now, if you look at the term macro, this is the definition. In other words, it's something on a bigger scale, whereas micro is smaller. Now, what do we mean in this case? We're talking about the three different nutrients that make up calories. As you may or may not know, calories are the overall energy currency that we consume through food. These are proteins, carbs, and fats. Just a quick overview, these macronutrients can affect things like your digestion, our hormone production, our immune system health, our cell structures, my favorite one, our body composition, meaning our actual fat and lean muscle mass, and our metabolic function. Now, these are, you know, just an umbrella of different things that these macronutrients affect. There's a very long list, but they can basically be encompassed within these things that I've listed here. So let's go ahead and talk about carbohydrates, the most demonized nutrient of them all. Now, I'm gonna start off with this one, get it out of the way, and help you understand the importance of carbs. So, carbohydrate, first and foremost, will yield four calories per gram, okay? Again, this is macronutrients, they equal calories. One gram of carbohydrates equals four calories. So something to know, if you have 25 grams of carbs, that actually will equal out to roughly 100 calories. I say roughly because this could depend on fiber content and all that, but typically 25 grams of carbs equals 100 calories just because if you go into that gray area, you'll just be going down a rabbit hole that could just go on forever. You're better off just sticking to the general guide of four calories per gram. I'm just gonna give you the big picture here. Number one is that carbs are not the enemy. As a matter of fact, they are one of the three macronutrients that are very important to performance, body composition, the way we feel, and all those other things that I mentioned. Carbs are included in that. So, people are too quick to cut out a very important macronutrient. There's only three. You cut out one of the three, there's gonna be problems with you know certain nutrients that you're not getting. Fiber content is found in carbs, and you know, it's 
actually gonna depend from person to person how many carbs is best for you to have. So for example, somebody who is known as a hard gainer or somebody who's on the skinnier side typically can take more carbs than somebody who's on the heavier side, okay? So typically it's the heavier people that are quick to, car uh, that are quick to say carbs are the reason that they're fat and all that. Well, typically it is true that heavier set people do react to carbs differently than skinnier people. Carbohydrate is actually the most important macronutrient when it comes to performance. So for example, elite athletes will never cut carbs. In fact, carbs are timed and manipulated very strategically for elite athletes. Just because you're not an elite athlete doesn't mean that you don't want your performance in the gym in everyday life not to be optimal. So that's where carbs come into play. Carbs could be stuff like your sweet potatoes, regular potatoes really, your rice, your quinoa, lentils, your oats, bread, all these things. I think we're all pretty familiar with what carbs are. And again, they are important, not so much the selection of foods that you're getting your carbs from, but more so the quantity that's going to lead to overall fat gain. Because if you eat too many carbs, that's gonna result in you eating too many calories. All right, we've got carbs out of the way. Now let's go ahead and talk about fats. So remember, carbs have four calories per gram of carbs. Now fats are the most calorie dense macronutrient and they yield nine calories, roughly nine calories per gram of fat. Now the fats are going to be very important when it comes to insulin sensitivity, aiding digestion, hormone production. That's basically what fats specialize in. Fats can also be of course used as stored energy, which when broken down will lead to performance. However, using fats as a primary source of fuel is not going to be as effective and as efficient as using carbohydrates for performance. So again, elite athletes or anybody that's looking to maximize performance, whether it's in the gym, building muscle, feeling great, runs, cycling, anything like that, you're going to benefit off getting both carbs and fats. Fats take longer to break down by the body, therefore they're better in long and endurance type of training, whereas carbs are a little bit more short term. Let me just go ahead and give you a breakdown of the overall all bigger picture when it comes to fats. Now, real quick, some fat sources you'll find avocados, olives, nuts, seeds, yogurts, uh, milk has fat in it as well, and meats typically have some saturated fats as well. Your coconut oil, any oils are typically fat. Uh, that means olive oil as well, of course. All those are your fats, okay? Now, one of those, again, is not directly bad for you. It's gonna be more so the quantity. So, an avocado that's full of healthy fats still lead to poor body composition. If you eat too much of that fat, you will be eating way too many calories. So the overall bigger picture of how many fats you should be having is roughly 20 to 30% of your overall calorie intake, okay? So if you stay within that range, you'll be good. Typically, you want more of the unsaturated fat. However, there's, again, certain saturated fats that aren't as bad as others. And I shouldn't say bad because neither of them are bad if you fit them within the limit that you should be at. Fats are essential to the body. Make sure that you're getting at least that 20% range so that you can have a proper hormone structure in the body, proper hormone production, and that you're not feeling too down. Because if you start cutting calories too low and taking all those calories from your fats, then it's gonna lead to you not feeling so good. All right, so that's fats. Remember, fats, nine calories per gram. Last macronutrient is protein. We all know and love protein. I know I do, look at them gang. But check it out, protein is the same as carbs in the sense that it yields four calories per gram of protein. Again, that means 25 grams of protein typically equals roughly 100 calories. Protein's main function in the body is repair and rebuilding of tissues. And we're not just talking about muscle tissue, actually all tissues in the body do have protein in them. This is essentially the building blocks of your body. So you know that includes muscle tissue, yes, but also connective tissues, skeletal tissues like bones, all that stuff, all protein. If you have to classify them, they are all very important, but protein is the most important and it's also extremely important when it comes to your body composition because again, it's gonna be responsible for how much muscle you build and how much muscle you hold. And of course, 
my general recommendation, also backed up by plenty of studies. If you guys want more information on this topic, you can click here and check the video out where I talk specifically about how much protein you should be having. But for rough and general estimates, it should be one gram per pound of body weight. That is, again, if you're looking to maximize your lean muscle and make sure that you hold on to as much as possible if you're losing fat. But don't forget, protein, everybody seems to neglect this, protein still has calories. If you overeat on protein, you will still not have a favorable body composition because you will eventually end up overeating calories, which regardless of whether they come from protein, carbs, or fat, is going to make you bigger in a bad way. And again, quick overview in case you didn't know what proteins are. Proteins can be found in fruits and veggies, but in lower doses. For the most part, meats, fish, you know, turkey, lamb, all that stuff. You're also looking at eggs, dairy, quinoa, lentils, beans. Those are more of the plant-based side of things. However, they are richer in carbs, so it's something to keep in mind. Also, protein can be and is utilized as an energy source as well. Now, that is macronutrients in a nutshell. Protein, carbs, fats, calories per gram, the bigger picture, how much you should have of each of them. Now, let's go ahead and talk about micronutrients. Micronutrients do not contain calories. They are contained within foods that have macronutrients, but they do not contain calories in themselves. So micronutrients are actually vitamins, your vitamin A, B, C, D, E, K, all those vitamins and your minerals too, calcium, potassium, magnesium, zinc, iodine, all those are your minerals and those are micronutrients, okay? Phytonutrients are the same thing, the nutrients you'll find in plants, fruits, all that, okay? So these, like I said, don't contain calories. However, they're still essential to the body. So if you were to eat macros without micros, which kind of doesn't really exist, but if you were to do that or if you ate foods that aren't micronutrient dense only, aka only fast foods, you're gonna lead to some micronutrient deficiencies, okay? Vitamin D deficiency is common in people that don't get lots of sunlight. Therefore, supplementation is good. All these vitamins you could become deficient in, so something very important to keep in mind. Now, each vitamin provides very different roles and benefits in the body. I'm not gonna go into a list of what each of these, you know, ton, like so many micronutrients do for your body but essentially they help regulate functions in the body they help regulate your hormones specifically they have to do with energy regulation they basically just make sure that your machine your body is oiled properly and it's running smoothly again any deficiency in a micronutrient whether it's vitamin a b c d whatever any deficiency in a mineral like iron and calcium these are obviously bad things and we want to avoid those now a very important benefit that micronutrients have in the bigger picture here is something that I refer to commonly as satiety okay this is the definition of satiety and it's essentially the ability for a food to keep you satisfied in other words how full you get from that food let me paint you a picture real quick and I'll put it up on this picture right here in one scenario you've got a ton of junk food and you can see it only fills up let's say that much of your stomach so you've eaten a thousand calories but you you could still eat more. Sound familiar? Let's say you go and eat a ton of veggies. You will have been completely filled up, you're stuffed from eating some veggies and you may not realize you've had like 100 calories. Okay, so this is the benefit of micronutrients. They actually increase your fullness. I preach a flexible dieting approach, whereas you have these foods that we refer to as junk food, those are loaded in macronutrients but lack micronutrients. So they've got tons of carbs, fats, proteins, but they have a very low micronutrient dense profile. And because of that, you can eat so much of it. Typically, this is because the processing of the foods removes the micronutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, the good stuff, and it kind of just leaves it as empty calories. Empty calories simply refer to as barely any micronutrients. So that's why your fruits and veggies will always be good foods to consume because if you have a pear as a snack, chances are it's gonna hold you over much longer or an apple than something like a chocolate bar. A chocolate bar, you have one and what do you want? You want more immediately because the sugar goes through your body much quicker. The micronutrients will slow down digestion. They will help with assimilation of the nutrients in your body and they're overall just better 
better in terms of body composition and help keep you full longer. They're gonna provide more energy and a more stable energy at that. So they're not gonna create all these spikes in your hormones and all that stuff. This is where the preconceived notion of healthy and unhealthy foods comes from. The fact that you eat a chocolate bar and it spikes your insulin, which then crashes, causing you to crave more sugar. Whereas you have a you know stick of celery, there is no sugar rush into the blood. Instead, it's a very slow, sustained release of sugar over time, which curbs and limits the amount of cravings you have. So again, these both have the same calories, let's say. However, it's gonna be much harder for you to overeat on the micronutrient-dense foods as opposed to the calorie-dense foods, okay? So I hope that makes sense, and I hope that paints the bigger picture. Micronutrients are very important, and it's always best to consume foods that are micronutrients dense however there is always a time and a place to have foods that are more calorie dense whether it be to increase your adherence and to help with your sanity to make sure that you feel good get that little sweet tooth craving satisfied every once in a while but again if you make most of your diet those calorie dense foods it's gonna be harder to stick to in the long term and that's where micronutrients come into play so again the summary of micronutrients vitamins and minerals and the higher the micronutrient content the more vitamins vitamins and minerals you have in a food, inherently and naturally the more quality that food is going to be in terms of helping you with your body composition, your fitness, your health, your hormone regulation, your body regulation and all that stuff. That is pretty much it for the video guys. I hope that I was able to cover a lot of the questions or concerns you may have had when it comes to this topic. I know I've been rambling on for quite a bit so I apologize for making this a long video but I just wanted to make sure again that you understand how the these things work. Like I said at the beginning, now that you've watched this, you need to know how many calories and how many macronutrients do you need? Well, perfect, because I got two different videos for you and they're both linked right here. I've got one that helps you calculate calories and then one that also helps you calculate your macronutrients. I've got plenty of other videos on the channel that's talk specifically about carb intake, fat intake, and protein intake. So please go ahead and take a look. You'll have all the information you need there. But this video specifically was just to help you determine the difference between macronutrients, micronutrients, and to help you understand those concepts a little bit better. And I hope I was able to accomplish that for you today. If you did learn something and you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up, hit that like button below, comment what you'd like to see next, anything I might have left out, I'd be happy to talk to you. As always, share with your friends, subscribe for more content, and thank you so much for watching this video and for the constant support. It overwhelms me and I'm super, super happy to have you on here and have you supporting me. Super appreciative of it. That's gonna be it for the video once again, guys. I look forward to seeing you in that next video, but until then, I'm out. Take care, everyone.